This next segment brought to you with the kind compliments of MedSafe Medical Supplies Limited. For all your medical supply needs, visit MedSafe Medical Supplies Limited. We offer a wide range of products including wheelchairs, walkers, canes, crutches, blood pressure machines, stethoscopes, and so much more. Conveniently located on Gemmets Lane, just a two-minute walk from the Queen Elizabeth Hospital. And for your convenience, we deliver free to the QEH. Open Monday to Saturday, 8.30 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. Call us at 624-7542. MedSafe Medical Supplies Limited, your trusted source for medical essentials. And time for another edition of the Pulse Radio Show. This is episode 10. I'm your host, Shane Seeley, communication specialist with the Queen Elizabeth Hospital. And it's always great to spend this time with you as we at the hospital try to hear and understand your concerns, your queries, and also listen to the many compliments that have been coming as well. But also respond and give you a better idea of what we are doing and how we are trying to improve the service delivery at the QEH. On this episode 10, we're speaking about uh, physiotherapy and the physiotherapy department and the work that is done there. So many of you, so many patients head there on a daily basis. Every day during our meetings, we always hear about at least 100 patients. I'm pretty sure. and. Dr. Jerry Warner, who is the head of department, he will correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, so he's here with me. But, you know, I always have my co-host. She is very busy this week as we are doing some things to ensure we enhance uh, the overall operations of the hospital. Uh, our chief operations officer, Dr. Christine Greenidge, is on the phone line today, but still with us. She makes sure that she's here because we know that you want to hear from our directors, our admin staff and, and more importantly those who are in charge of operations. Dr. Greenwich, good morning. Okay, well Dr. Greenwich will be joining us shortly, I think. Uh, she will be on the phone line today, but as I said, in studio with me is Dr. Jerry Warner. Dr. Warner, always good uh, to talk to you. Thank you, Shane. Good morning to you and to everyone online um, and on air. Good to be with you. And also we have another one of our physiotherapists, uh, Dr. Alicia Grace. Good morning, everyone. So good to have you both. Until Dr. Greenwich uh, joins us, uh, Dr. Warner, talk a bit about uh, the work you do in the physiotherapy department and more importantly, how you serve the public on a daily basis. Sure. So physiotherapy has been the first of the rehab professions that was established at the hospital coming out of the polio epidemic in Barbados in the late 60s. Um, the department is now the rehab department with physiotherapy being one of those three legs, occupational therapy and prosthetics and orthotics, the other two legs. And the department head is actually Dr. Mosley. I'm the chief physiotherapist. Uh, on a daily basis, we serve the public, both inpatients and outpatients. Literally, on a daily basis, we serve the inpatients. That is 365 days a year, including holidays. And those services are dedicated to the more critically ill persons on the holidays and weekends, and then to the general inpatient populace on the weekdays. We also manage outpatients. The outpatients are wide and varied, both from the multiple outpatient clinics at the QEH, as well as from polyclinics and also some private referrals into our department. Okay. So... I mentioned the number there, I, uh, that magic number, about 100 uh, patients coming in on a daily basis. And Dr. Alicia Grace is here with you as well. Dr. Grace, talk about that uh, flow in and out of the department and managing that flow. And talk a bit about yourself and what you do specifically. Okay, um, I right now work with the inpatient team. Our physio team are divided into an outpatient team and an inpatient team. The inpatient team are the therapists who would actually deal with the patients who are 
in the hospital at that present time. The outpatient team, they're the ones who deal with the wide cross-section of referrals and patients that come through the physiotherapy department as outpatients. They come, they get their treatment, they leave. With the inpatient um, team, we treat the patients who are on the ward. So that varies from our orthopedic conditions, our cardiopulmonary conditions, our strokes, kids, elderly, we see everyone from a oh. physiotherapy perspective on the inpatient team. And, and when I really think about it, uh, I heard the COO mention this, and she'll talk a bit about her experience and why your team is so important. You really get people, no pun intended, back on their feet. You try to, mm -hmm. because in some cases I know that it can be a long process. It can be a frustrating process for many patients, Dr. Warner. Talk about going through those processes with your patients? Sure. So each patient, of course, is an individual. They're not just a diagnosis. So when referred, we will then assess each patient. On assessment, we come up with the problem list that they have, and then we design management tools and interventions to treat those problems. Some of the problems that you mentioned may be neurological in order. So depending on the type of diagnosis, some neurological problems may be permanent. Unfortunately, a spinal cord injury, a complete mm -hmm. spinal cord injury, will be paralyzed from a particular level of their spine all the way down to the rest of their body. Um, and if it's complete, there's nothing that we can do yet to change that. Our management then would be to get the person functional as to what capabilities they have. If it's a a spinal cord injury that occurs below the neck uh, and down to the waist, they may be uh, paraplegic, that's the lower limbs are, 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 are paralyzed. So they may be able to transfer into a wheelchair, may be able to push their own wheelchair, feed themselves, learn how to turn, etc., etc. If it's above, if it's higher up in the cervical region or the neck region, sadly that person might be a quadriplegic, all four limbs are paralyzed, wow. and that person will require a lot more help. Initially then, our job will be to make sure that they're able to keep a chest clear because once you don't have the thoracic nerves innervated, you can't cough. You can't do the normal things that you would do to keep your chest clear. Initially, once you get them past that, then it's specialized treatment along with the occupational therapist for a specialized type of wheelchair, maybe examine the home to see what um, could be done to help them survive and educate the family members as to their care. Now, it's a very delicate situation in some cases because it's not straightforward. The family are stressed because of the circumstances. It may be, usually these are very acute injuries, motor vehicle accident or unfortunately gunshot wound. Um, so it's very sudden change in life, life situation. It's very difficult sometimes for the family to come to grips. And oftentimes we have to be the ones who, because we spend more time with the patient than most other health professionals except nursing, we have to be the ones who have to guide them through and help them to control their expectations. It can be difficult because we don't want to damage their faith, but at the same time you understand the reality of the situation. So if you can give them the coping strategies, it really helps a lot. Um, things like preventing pressure sores, preventing what we call aspirations, as I was Bajan say, food going down the wrong mm -hmm. swallow. Those are things that can preserve life. These types sort of things also happen in our stroke population, where at least as she mentions in an inpatient, we get between two and three strokes a day in Barbados. That's a high number. Mm -hmm. And stroke rehab is not quick, um, unless it's a mild stroke. Very mild stroke or a transient ischemic attack that usually gets better within 24 to 48 hours, they're pretty fine. But anybody beyond that, you're looking at usually the first six months to try to maximize their return. We have a stroke unit set up at the hospital um, where we have a mixture of QEH therapists and private sector therapists who come in to offer uh, gold standard treatment on that ward. Um, but then the other wards as well, we, 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 we treat persons. You might have come into hospital, had a surgery. Uh, you may have had a pneumonia after your surgery. You might have come in for a fractured hip you might have had um, something that requires an abdominal surgical intervention. All of these are persons that we may see. So when Alisa says we see everybody, we don't see all 300 plus patients in the hospital, but we see the ones that are referred after procedures who require our help. Because we have to work on patients, Alicia's inpatient team does to get them out of hospital quickly, as safely as possible. This is necessary, of course, then, so we can decant the ENE where patients can then be admitted. Um, and then we run into the unfortunate problem where we've got persons ready, and then some of them are 
left at the hospital. That's, if that's the phrase I'm going to use. I'm not going to go any further in that area. Um, and although they are rehabbed as far as we can get them, they're not leaving the hospital for various social reasons. And that creates a bit of a barrier for us. Um, to help counteract that, we've expanded some services to one particular polyclinic at the St. Lucie District Hospital, which helps us to move some patients off, but that then extends our staff who are already limited, sometimes to the breaking point. So we, we at the QEH, we take on the burden of the QEH and also the burden of one district hospital and the burden of polyclinic referrals. So we really are everything to everyone. Um, and that does create a problem for us in terms of the numbers we have to manage. And you're quite correct. On average day, we can go between 90 to 120 patients coming through our department. That's a mixture of in and out patients. Okay, the COO is on the line. And before I go to her, I want to give you those numbers to call 434-1007 or 434-1070 to join us here on the Pulse Radio Show. You can also send us a WhatsApp at 434-1007. 1007. Let me welcome in now our Chief Operations Officer, Dr. Christine Greenwich. Good morning, Gr Dr. Greenwich. I know you've been very busy this morning. How are you doing? Dr. Greenwich, are you there? I know you were a minute ago. All right. We're, we're going to try to uh, get in touch with her because I know she has a yes. lot... Oh, hello. Oh, okay. I'm here on the line. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning, Good Dr. Great. How are you? I'm well. I'm well. I know you've been very busy, uh, but I also know that this program, especially physiotherapy and the work that they do in that department, is very important to you on a personal level because you know how they can help to rehabilitate people after a fall. You're very passionate about this area. Pro probably you can go into that in a bit more detail to talk about how important physiotherapy is in getting Barbadians and our patients back on their feet. Absolutely. It is one of the services that uh, fundamentally has such a wide range of offerings to help uh, our patients and their families. But in particular, uh, falls, especially those falls that result in injuries such as fractures, for example, uh, commonly known fractures it could be uh, in the feet of the leg bones, the femur, um, it could be the pelvis and other parts of the bodies. And a rehab serves a very, very important um, function in terms of assisting individuals to return back to what we call uh, the ability to have uh, activities of daily uh, living. So um, uh, besides um, trauma type of rehabilitations, um, those are commonly associated with strokes, for example, uh, where there's a long course of rehabilitation that consists of getting people back in terms of their balances, in terms of resuming um, walking, um, feeding themselves, etc. Um, rehab is, is so fundamentally important in terms of getting individuals back to uh, normal and or uh, as close as normal um, functioning uh, in their health. Mm. Dr. Grace, I want to come to you on that note. Mm -hmm. How do you help patients to manage what Dr. Warner was just speaking about, those expectations? Everyone wants to be back to normal mm -hmm. again, and you in your profession, in your professional capacity, know that in many cases that may not be possible. How do you help your patients manage those expectations? Well, I, I think Well, not you, Dr. <laughs> Dr. Greenwich. Oh, sorry. <laughs> that was for Dr. Grace, <laughs> uh, who is here with us as well, along with Dr. Warner. Oh, wonderful. Okay. Okay, in dealing with the expectations of the patients, um, especially if I'm going to use the example of someone who's had a stroke, when you've had a stroke and you have the residual weakness on one side of the body, for those persons sometimes coming to grips with the fact that, okay, I may never be able to drive again or I may never be able to walk without an aid or, you know, go back to work, it is life-altering. And um, especially we've been seeing a lot of younger persons now who are experiencing these type of life-altering situations. Um, it requires counseling. 
we let them know, okay, there's still a way that you can function. You may not be able to function the way that you were before, but you can still have a purpose. You let them see that this is not the end. I can still help. I've had a patient that we just got him working within a different department at his job. So let them see that there's still life after a stroke. Um, once you talk to them, you explain to them, okay, this is, you know, how the road can be after a stroke. They become more amenable to the situation and recovery becomes a lot easier because when persons have that set back in terms of denial in not fully understanding what's going to happen to them, it can slow down their recovery process. But when you give them a goal in mind, okay, let's try to see if we can sit upon our own. Let's see if we can stand upon our own. Let's take a few steps on our own. When you give them those little markers to achieve, it makes it easier than for them to go through their recovery process. Mm. Recovery is, uh, that's a lot of personal responsibility too. Yes. Mental it's personal mental, responsibility yes. in terms of believing that you can do it. I know that as far as we've been seeing a lot of GSWs, I, I want people to understand the phrasing as well. Those are gunshot wounds coming in. Mm -hmm. and those patients in terms of recovery, because we do help some of them even after the, that ordeal to recover to a point that they can get back to their normal lives. It must be difficult, Dr. Warner, dealing with situations like that and, and the, social de the social determinants uh, that surround that because they come out of a situation where they were involved in an altercation like that. Yes, um, there are some slight diff more difficulties in certain situations. I want to point out, you mentioned the need for mental strength, but family support is also very, very, very important. important. Once you have um, a good nucleus of support around you, you will find that those persons are also more motivated to, to get better. Uh, most people's, people want to get out of hospital. So if you have a situation where you, uh, your family has agreed, once you're better, we're going to take you home, you will again see a different level of joy, different level of, of, of personal involvement and effort into those persons, which um, brings me again to mention the young and elderly for care that we, we mm -hmm. manage at the hospital. Um, some of these persons, I did mention this earlier, but I just want to again re reach out to family members. When your family member has improved to the point where they can function out of the hospital setting, we would encourage you as much as humanly possible to try to get them out of that setting. They will actually improve faster out of that setting. And if there are questions that you have or you don't know how to get something done, just reach out to us. We'll be willing to help show you how to do things in physio, how to help you transfer. We do this when you when we, when we see you in the outpatient setting anyway. How do I get you out of the car, et cetera, et cetera. The other thing of personal responsibility you want to talk about, Dr. Grace just mentioned severity of stroke in our younger population, especially our males. Mm -hmm. We have a number of persons who are not aware of their medical status. They don't know that they're hypertensive. They don't know that they're diabetic. They have not gone to the doctor. Some of them who do go to the doctor then don't take the medications. We are aware of some of the reasons why they don't take their medications, <laughs> um, especially for the males. It can have an effect in certain activities in their lives, but the cause of the effect of not taking your medication is that you could lose function of one side of your body. You can lose the ability to speak. These are some of the, the sequelae of stroke. So we want to really encourage persons to embrace the lifestyle changes that are discussed with you by your doctors, by your nurses, by the Diabetic Association, the Heart and Stroke Foundation, all of these various entities, the, the blurbs that you hear on CBC, Q100 FM, all the various entities that give you information on your health, please mm -hmm. adhere to it. Adjust your diet, exercise, take your medications, and everything in moderation. We really want to push that message. COO, you want to add to that, especially on the point right. of elderly uh, and young for care that we are seeing at our hospital and family yes. involvement? Uh, absolutely. Um, family support is so important. And I think that the emphasis just placed on that value by Dr. Warner really cannot be underscored at all. But besides um, uh, physical rehab, uh, in, in particular, speaking about 
victims of strokes is the other therapies such as occupational therapy, such as speech therapy, that along with the physical aspects of rehab that co-join together to try to get the individual back to a functional state of health. So um, in, a, in a stroke, there could be deficits such as, in medicine, we call them sensory deficits. That means sometimes the inability to speak or even understand um, language that's coming because of the effect of the stroke on the sensory uh, perceptions. And then there's the motor ability, that is the ability to form the words and get the words out clearly because of the, um, the one-sided weakness on that um, part of the body. So together with occupational, with speech therapy, and physical rehab therapy, you know, this team of rehabilitation medicine comes together um, to really work on the individual, to get them to the highest level that they can, um, to function as independently as they can based on their presentation. Yes. Uh, Remember those numbers to call, 434-1007. 434-1070 to join us here on the Pulse Radio Show on Q100.7 FM. And you can also send a WhatsApp at 434-1007. As you heard, the services of the physiotherapy department are wide, they're varied. Uh, there's also Chinese medicine. Chinese medicine yes. is a very important yes. part. Yes, traditional Chinese of, medicine. Of your team is um, one of the services that uh, we we are grateful for. To, and we actually have <coughs> genuine traditional Chinese medicine practitioners from China itself who are part of our team. Uh, through an arrangement with the Chinese government, they send a team of practitioners on an annual basis. And among them for the last maybe five cycles or four or five mm-hmm. cycles has been a traditional Chinese medicine practitioner. Uh, traditional Chinese medicine uses um, things such as acupuncture, moxibustion, which is the burning of particular herbs, um, and a specialized massage such as tuna um, to manage very much the same conditions that we may manage in what we would call a Western medicine way. They use um, meridians and different pathways to relieve pain and to increase function. We've had good uptake, especially with our chronic pain sufferers, um, mm-hmm. for the use of the Chinese medicine. And they have built quite a good bond with our practitioners. And when they have to leave, then it's usually quite a bit of a traumatic <laughs> experience for <laughs> our patients. But luckily, uh, within a few weeks, uh, another practitioner has arrived and I think my understanding is that this will also happen again later on this year where the current practitioner leaves another TCM um, doctor will come. I know you you both observe uh, the practitioners in their in their operations and dealing with patients how does it differ and maybe both of you can give me your take on this from what you do as a physiotherapist what they do in terms of Chinese medicine all right, so I'm going to take that one because I've had the privilege of being trained in TCM over a three-month period back in 2008, I think. I actually went to China for three months. 2008? Yeah. That's a long time a ago. A long time ago. <laughs> um, so like I said, the approaches are different. For example, though, some of the meridians will actually be very similar to our peripheral nerve yeah. pathways. Mm-hmm. They're very, very similar. Um, the fact that they use the needle, when you introduce a sharp foreign object, into the body you get a localized reaction that localized reaction we use something called trigger points uh, before we do dry needling physios now do a lot of dry needling different because they use different points to the tcm but in theory one way of dealing with a sharp painful area is to introduce a pressure on the area which cuts off the blood supply temporarily what that does that forces the muscles to relax because they want to open up the blood vessels to get blood back to the area. Uh, area can't stay in your body without blood, so the body has mechanisms built in. So you're able then to stop that spasm in that area after about 30 seconds of a sustained pressure. Um, TCM does something similar but using a sharp, sharp instrument and then like I said they do m- m- pathways and they do meridians so they'll have particular acupuncture points that create changes in your body's reactions using the yin yang theory um, so that the particular points that they will use distant to the point that they're treating which then causes the positive effects of the chi flow they call it um, which is their life force 
mm. to help to help treat our patients. Uh, many people are warm to these to these techniques because they, they find that they work, mm -hmm. um, and we'd like to do things in conjunction. When I studied in China, um, interestingly, a number of their trained orthopedic surgeons, these are persons with fellows of the Royal College of Surgery um, uh, qualifications, would also do manipulations for their cases. This is not something that you would see in this setting. The manipulations would come either to us or to the chiropractic right. rather than to, to the doctors. That, that was an interesting um, thing for me to notice. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, so you have options and, and, and is this something that you can request? You can, uh, re or is this something that is on a referral basis that you refer to do uh, the Chinese medicine side of things rather than uh, Western treatment. So all all referrals are by our head of department, Dr. Mosley, and he's the person that and then that then challenge challenge these persons to the TCM doctor. Mm. Right. Uh, I guess it's possible for a public person to come right, so speak with come Dr. Mosley, and, and, and then he can do that. I want to try mm -hmm. yeah. try um that way of things. I've done some research, and I heard it really really worked, and I believe that uh, this will be best for me. And while I'm not making a plug for anyone, there are trained traditional Chinese practitioner medicine pr persons in Barbados, separate and distinct to the ones that come from China. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, I mean, as I said, it's a wide range of services that you can get in physiotherapy. Uh, Dr. Warner would have mentioned that rehab is the overall, uh, uh, basically, designation where you fall under it. Um, can I hear like uh, those other services that are offered through those other channels? Can you talk a bit about them outside of the physiotherapy? Okay, the other services that fall under the rehab, we have occupational therapy, mm -hmm. and then we also have the prosthetic and orthotics department. What the prosthetic and orthotic department would do, um, going back again to our stroke patients, um, for like patients who've had a subluxation of the affected arm. Basically what that is, is that because of the weakness of the muscles, they cannot hold the shoulder joint in place, so it becomes dislocated. So the PNO department would be responsible then, they make what we will call a hemi-sling that helps to support the patient's arm while they're going through that recovery process. Um, they would also make what we will call a foot drop slint um, after a person would have had some neurological involvement following an injury they can get what we call a foot drop so they would use different materials to fabricate a splint which would help them with their recovery too as well occupational therapy would focus more on getting that person as close to functional as they were before they had their incident um, so you would look at feeding looking at how would you maneuver at home? They would do a home assessment to see what changes would be need to made um, in terms of if you need to get a ramp, if you need to get wider doorways, if you need to, a lot of behavioral modifications are what they would focus more on to in the occupational therapy department. Hmm. And when, uh, in terms of enhancements going forward, uh, we always look to improve and enhance our services. What are some of the other things that our patients can expect to see uh, in the not too distant future in terms of treatment, in terms of options for their care? Some of the things that you envisage for the physiotherapy department, Dr. Warner. So the first thing in terms of enhancements, the physiotherapists ensure that we do continuing education on an annual basis. Um, even during COVID, we would do it online. Um, we just literally finished um, a treatment, a course in traditional Chinese medicine and, uh, introduction. Um, later on this year, we're going to have a course on the management of the shoulder. Um, and what we do, this is in conjunction with the Barbados Physiotherapy Association. The QEH offers quite a bit of sponsorship, not in terms of physical dollars, but in terms of space. Um, where we can allow the, the we come on the weekend and they use our space for the, the sessions. Um, so we, we pay for that those sessions. We bring experts in from various parts of the world um, and they will then teach us new techniques uh, or help us to fine tune our skills. And um, what we, we also do is that persons have done some specialized areas. We have one physio who has done something called lymphedema. This is a critical function for our females who have to unfortunately undergo treatment for breast cancer. Um, oftentimes it then leaves them with the, the, the upper limb on the affected side uh, quite swollen 
Um, Dr. Francis is an expert in this area and she is able to do specialized ways of managing that area for them. Um, other areas that we, we look at, we offer specialized care to scoliosis surgeries, um, specialized treatment for particular surgery called Blount's disease um, surgery. Uh, we work with the World Pediatric Project for those areas. Um, and then among ourselves, for example, we have some one of our physios has specialized a lot in management of diet, exercise, and wellness. Um, so what, in fact, just about everyone in our department has gone beyond their first degree. Um, many of us have actually obtained doctorates in physiotherapy. Um, the majority of staff has. So we continue to upgrade our skills to be able to deal with the challenges that would come out. Yeah. Um, that's really important. That's what patients want to hear. <laughs> You're listening to the Pulse Radio Show on, here on Q100.7 FM. You're here with myself, Shane Seeley, Communications Specialist. The Chief Operations Officer is on the line, Dr. Christine Greenwich. Dr. Jerry Warner, he is the Head of Physiotherapy. And we're also here with Dr. Alicia Grace, a physiotherapist. We'll take a quick break and be back with more on the Pulse Radio Show. For all your medical supply needs, visit MedSafe Medical Supplies Limited. We offer a wide range of products including wheelchairs, walkers, canes, crutches, blood pressure machines, stethoscopes, and so much more. Conveniently located on Gemmets Lane, just a two-minute walk from the Queen Elizabeth Hospital. And for your convenience, we deliver free to the QEH. Open Monday to Saturday, 8.30 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. Call us at 624-7542. MedSafe Medical Supplies Limited, your trusted source for medical essentials. We're back with you on the Pulse Radio Show. Let's go to the phone line very quickly where we have a caller. Good morning, caller. Welcome to the Pulse Radio Show. What's your question or comment? Yes, hi, good morning, Shane. How are you doing? Oh, how are you doing, Kamal? How are you doing? <laughs> Bless, blessings, well, your man, I guess it's a blessing with your presence, your man, I'm blessed because some blessings come from you. Well, it's glad to hear that you're good this morning, Shane. I have a couple of questions, as usual. Go ahead. Yes, thank you very much. This question is to Dr. Grace. Good morning, Dr. Grace. How are you, ma'am? I'm doing well. How are you? Oh, glad to hear that. Dr. Grace Park has got responsibility here, responsible for this call. Um, it talks about here it, from the Miriam Webster Dictionary. Uh, from the Fort Worth, Texas Star Telegram. It says women worried about getting osteoporosis should start skipping, jogging, and doing high impact aerobics. In newly issued British guidelines, British physiotherapists and osteoporosis specialists said they were the best exercises to, the, to avert the disease. Uh, my question is what about in cases of the treatment of marijuana or marijuana medication? Uh, medicinal marijuana has been I now use newly for the um, for the for the for, for the physiotherapy department, and I would have heard an interview with Dr. Moses. So talk to me about the difference between use the use of marijuana for women and men, please. Thank you. That question goes a little outside of my scope. Um, I would attack it from a physical standpoint, um, which would be more along my line of treatment. Um, for persons, um, you've highlighted women who are challenged with osteoporosis. Um, that usually happens in women as they get older where hormone changes have started to take effect. What we as physiotherapists will do from that angle would be to encourage exercise, as you rightly said, as the journal did point out. Um, namely, we want to focus a lot more on hydrotherapy which allows the women to exercise freely in water taking all of the pressure off of the bones and the joints that would be affected due to the osteoporosis changes um with regards to your question with the medical marijuana and the medicinal use of it um i am not a hundred percent the best person to answer that question and I would suggest that for persons who are interested in getting into using medical marijuana, that they definitely speak to their doctor to get the correct um, information as to if it would be best for them to use it. Dr. Wani, you want to add to that? Not really, not much more. Um, physiotherapists don't prescribe medications. 
Mm. Right, our doctors of physiotherapy do not extend to that privilege in the Barbadian setting. Uh, my colleagues in England um, do that, um, and some parts of the U.S. as well, but not in Barbados. Uh, the, his, the point to note, though, is that medical marijuana is used for pain management. Pain. Right, osteoporosis is a, is a wear and tear thing that is affected by hormones. So exercise is important, as he did mention. So he mentioned high impact exercise, but we would do high impact exercise in a younger person because in the middle age or older person, there are other concerns that you would worry about in terms of joint health, in terms of things like osteoarthritis, etc. So you don't want to start high impact on a joint that may already be damaged. So the controlled uh, exercise such as hydrotherapy, which our older Barbadians actually get into the sea, much to our shame, <laughs> um, <laughs> much more than we do, and this on to right. So he's right, and you're, you're quite right in terms of the physiotherapist recommending exercise. We do want to do a lot more high impact exercise earlier rather than later. Okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm so glad that we um, got a word in about hydrotherapy. Is he your, all your favorite caller? Oh, <laughs> oh yes, but um, I really appreciate the inclusion of hydrotherapy and its benefits and Dr. Warner's reference to the sea uh, surrounding us um, is a great um, area where um, especially for joints and extension type of exercises to help maintain bodily uh, functions is so very very important. Indeed. Uh, Kamal you have another question? Okay I think he is gone from the line now uh, but we hope that you know that answered his query in terms of the use of medicinal marijuana in yes. terms of pain treatment specific Correct. to that pain Shane, treatment yes please i'm wondering if um dr warner and dr graves could uh, just touch on coordination and balance uh, balances and uh, uh coordination because i find that as people age sometimes they become um, unaware of, of changes in their own physical coordination and or balance that can predispose them to a higher risk of fall. Okay, um, what we do at the hospital, we have what we will call a fall, fall prevention. Um, depending on, and there are a number of factors that can lead to persons with changes in their balance and coordination. Um, as we get older, that in itself is a factor. But then depending on the medical condition, strokes, um, depending on where in the brain is affected by the stroke. For example, persons who would have a cerebellar stroke, that's where the cerebellum itself is affected by the stroke. They can functionally move all of their limbs. However, because of where that stroke would have occurred, they lose a lot of their balance and coordination. So those persons tend to be what we call ataxic and they're sitting down, they're fine, but from the time they get up, they are shifting, falling all over the place because their balance has been completely altered. So we work with them to get them back into balance training. We will do balance training in sitting. We do balance training in standing. We get them on their all fours, four point kneeling, and we progress from there to help retrain that balance and to help to prevent these falls. Because what can happen, especially after as in the elderly, we see it more once they've had a fall, they become so fearful of falling again. Yeah. and therefore they just tend to want to not move at all right so we have to encourage them we are there to support them we use whatever walking aid we might need to to get them back onto their feet and it's a slow progress um slow process but once they feel comfortable and reassured into walking again getting that balance and coordination um, going again, they feel a bit more confident and therefore ready to start moving again. Dr. Warner? Yeah, um, in addition to that, we want to look at things like footwear um, so that the famous flip flops and slides mm. that Barbadians like really are terrible. Yeah. The, the, so, so if you have a person with balance issues, you want to have a, as we just call it, enclosing an enclosed shoe. shoe. So, <laughs> Doctor Warner, I gotta stop you there. So sure. you say all these flip flops and these slippers. Slides. For the young uh, people, that's fine. That's fine. Uh -huh. For young people, it's fine. Any person with a diabetic foot, any person yes. um, aging with um, balance issues, not good, because it, the, the the toes are no 
engage and just gripping that shoe to, keep to it hold it on your foot. So it's not they're not able to then react in a dynamic way to changes of surface um, surface, surface, surface un unevenness. Um, it's, if it's a non compliant surface, it's a problem. So, a sandal, which is, has a back strap, an enclosed shoe, a lace shoe, lace shoes are always best, um, are good. Uh, we want to just touch now we've, on that briefly because we have a lot of diabetics in Barbados and unfortunately we manage amputations as well. And perhaps I'll just pause here just to talk a very briefly as to what we do in many areas. You did ask us to expand on the areas that we manage in physiotherapy. We see persons who are very ventilated on ICU. Um, However, machines are breathing for them. We have to help them manage the stretch, the, the, the chest. We have to get the limbs strong again. And we have a number of ICUs in the hospital. So we have surgical ICU patients who have severe surgical cases, medical ICU patients who are very ill with um, disease, with, 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 with heart and, and other medical problems. We have a pediatric ICU for uh, children and neonatal ICU for premature um, babies. The physiotherapist is involved in the management in all of those areas. I uh, just wanted to touch on that because people are not always aware of what we do. Sometimes my, my, my colleagues, not colleagues, forgive me, a patient who sees me in a patient may somehow see me on the ward on the weekend and they're like, what are you doing on the ward? So <laughs> like, <laughs> it's a different role from yep. the outpatient setting. Multifaceted. So, so if yeah. you've only been exposed to outpatients, then you would have known. And then here I am now going into footwear advice. Why am I doing that? Because if I'm going to get you up walking, I have to make sure that you're safe in everything that you do. If you've come to me, even with a fracture, and you're using a walker and you're hopping on one leg for the first three months, the foot that you're impacting the ground with has to have on a proper shoe. So we have people who go home, they put on slippers, they're using crutches and they fall. And they fall down. Yeah. Yeah. This mm -hmm. is as simple yep. as that. We know <laughs> yeah. flip socks are cultural, we know they're cheap, we know they're easy, but they really are. For anyone who has a walking issue, almost a shoe of, of evil for them. Wow. Yes. And and let me just emphasize what Dr. Warner and, and Shane, you know that uh, I've, I've spoken to you about footwear in particular. I and know how diabetes. passionate you are about this. My passion. <laughs> and um, I'm telling you, with, with the flip-flops, you know, we get sudden rain uh, fall sometimes. You're outside and wear your flip-flops and it starts to rain, torrential downpour. That becomes almost like a, a wet, slippery surface flip-flops, you, your feet are not grabbing, and therefore you're going to predispose yourself to a fall. Uh, to, chances are a fall with an injury. But I also want our, our staff, um, Dr. Reza and Dr. Warner, to please mention neuropathy in the feet, in, uh, in particular with the diabetic patient, and how that may um, uh, give a sense of off balance and therefore difficulty sometimes in walking. And secondly, I've seen a lot of people walking outside with a cane, and nine out of ten times, the cane looks taller than they are. So just emphasize the importance of being measured um, for um, using an assistive device, such as the most commonly known as the walking cane. Okay, I'll touch the uh, first part of the question. I'll let Dr. Grace deal with the cane. So diabetic neuropathy. So... You know where your limb is in space. Those at home who are non-diabetics, just close your eyes and you can tell if your fingers are bent. And as you mentioned, those at home, sorry to cut you, Dr. One, I gotta do this. 434107, 434107, because I know you would want to ask Dr. Warner about your concerns when you're managing them at home. 434107, 434107, and the first number you can send uh, your WhatsApps to 4341007. Continue, Dr. Warner. Sure. Um, so with diabetics, the, ner the nerves need blood to live. The small capillaries, the very small part vessels that feed the nerves, they get blotted. So the nerves don't get blood and therefore the nerves die. A pathology of the nerve, neuropathy. Because the nerve dies, you're not getting sensitive feedback, no sensations coming. One of the sensations that is lost is where your joint is in space. The other sensation that's lost is whether you can feel pain or not. So sadly, some people come to the hospital, have not, have not examined their feet every night like they should, with a wound that already is festering. Because mm -hmm. well, it, it's not hurting. Because they can't it's feel they it. They can't feel it. Mm. Right? So um, neuropathy therefore affects your ability to know where your feet is when you step and also what surface you're stepping on. 
Um, and that's another thing that can affect your balance. In, the in terms of the walking aid, no, I'll handle Okay, so when you're going to use a uh, walking aid, depending if you're going to use a cane, and these canes can be either a quad cane, what we call a four-point cane, where it has the four prongs to the bottom. It can be a tray, where it would have three, or just a single prong cane. When you're going to measure for your cane, you want to stand with the device to your side and have it to the height of your wrist, so that when you have to push onto that cane it's not too high or not too low so you're going to stand have the cane to your side and measure it to the height of your wrist when it's to your wrist you know that that's an acceptable height also at the bottom of the cane we have some people will say oh they need a shoe for the cane we call it ferrules if your ferrule is bursting if the cane is bursting through the bottom of your ferrule that is a complete safety hazard because your cane does not have the grip that it needs then when you're walking on a surface so you always want to check to make sure that your cane has a proper ferrule on it that's not broken it's not chipped it's not anything so that it gives you that support and the safety the grip that you need to have when you're going to be walking same thing for a walker um, persons would say should I get a walker with wheels should I get one without wheels it really comes into a preference however for persons who do have balance issues we would suggest a walker without the wheels because what can happen is that if you off balance and that walker gets away from you, mm -hmm. you and the walker can turn upside down. Another hazard. Another hazard. Right. So um, what you can do, you can get advice from your physiotherapist as to the best type of walking aid that you can use, which would be better able to adapt to your situation and will give you the necessary support and safety that you need. Two things I want to touch on in the last uh, few minutes that we have here on the program. One big issue that has been plaguing Barbados as a whole, and I know you spoke about it already in another forum, Dr. Warner, arthritis. Arthritis is something that many Barbadians complain about. There are many uh, old, old wives' tales about how it affects you, you know, if it's too cold, if the rain is falling, uh, and then you have to break down some of those myths. Talk to us about how you're seeing, what you're seeing as far as arthritis um, is concerned among our population. Sure. So it's a wear and tear condition of your joints. Um, will happen to almost everyone. Yeah, um, it's just uh, the severity that's the issue. If you have a job that involves lifting and handling, say you are an, a porter, you are a nurse, you um, you work with delivery, you work as a cook and you've got to lift pots with water, etc. Any job that involves lifting and handling will increase musculoskeletal injuries to particular joints neck lower back shoulders wrist just pause very quickly dr one we do have a caller on the okay. line and they may be calling about the same thing sure good morning caller welcome to the pulse radio show uh what's your question or comment good morning to everyone good morning um, dr warner i would like to find out if you have sciatica that is spread from one foot to the other and you also had a fall that affected um, your coccyx, so therefore you're unable to really walk, you walk with a walker. What is recommended? It, could it, could um, the acupuncture, not acupuncture, could the Chinese medicine help? Okay, so the last thing you said, Chinese you also had a fall that affected your coccyx, is what you said, a fall yes. or sore, a fall, okay. A fall. All right, um, so the f the, what you're calling sciatica, which, is, which I'll explain what that is, at the back of your leg from the lower back down the middle mm -hmm. of your butt, down the back of your leg, all the way down to your, your knee and then it branches into two, it's a sciatic nerve. So pain that starts at your back and runs down the back of your leg, pins and needles, numbness, burning, tingling, sensation of ants crawling on your skin. Any of these are sensations that you can have, including weakness. Remember, a nerve has two functions. It has a function of a motor function, and it has a sensory function. Um, the fact that you're mentioning it occurring in both legs mean that you may, li may likely, and once you're sure you've ruled out circulation issues, some of these issues, you need to have your doctor help you to 
have a, a differential diagnosis. You need to be sure that it is uh, sciatic of an orthopedic nature or is it that you're having similar sensations because of, a cir as patients call it, poor circulation. Nonetheless, in case it's, it's a sciatic of an orthopedic nature affecting both sides, it would imply that there is a problem at your lower back which is affecting the nerve roots that come out from the spinal cord both on your left and right side. Um, then you mentioned the fall that affected your coccyx which may also have some impact on pressure that was placed on your intervertical disc and mm -hmm. also with the biomechanics of that entire area of your lower back pelvis. Mm -hmm. uh, acupunct TCM is, a option, is an option for managing pain and nerve related concerns but the thing that we want to recommend most for our physiotherapy for uh, most in fact every condition is exercise. exercise but the exercises are not just what you pick up and do on YouTube or you pick up and go to the gym and do the gym has its place personal trainers have their place and full respect to them but in terms of rehab you need to have an exercise specialist physiotherapist slash that's that's that's, that's what we are um, to guide you through what exercises are necessary in the acute stage and then how to progress you through those areas. If you strengthen the area of weakness in your lower back that's causing the insult to your nerve by doing specific exercises for your muscles that run in the back, you will take some of the pressure off of that nerve over time. What people don't like to do is to continue the exercises. They come to physio, they feel better, we discharge them, they stop doing what mm -hmm. they were doing, mm -hmm. they go home, then a year later they want to come back into physio to do the same thing. Meanwhile, we're having 104 new referrals a month coming into the department and you can understand the pressure that puts on us to have repeat persons. So, uh, yes, you have a genuine concern. Yes, TCM may be of help to you um, and physio may be of help to you to answer you in the short term. I hope that answered your question, ma'am. Yes, it does. Thank you. You're most welcome. And thank you for calling us uh, to hear, uh, get those answers from Dr. Warner. And of course, uh, uh, Dr. Alicia is here as well to just uh, share with you uh, some of those things that you can do and some of the things that you can achieve if you go the right route, which is the physiotherapist. Uh, you were speaking about arthritis before it cut you, Dr. Warner. Yes. Um, yes. So we're in tear of your joint. Um, in, the, in the joint, it's something called cartilage, which is like a shock absorber that gets worn down. Well, the different types of arthritis. Right now, I'm talking about osteoarthritis. Um, and therefore, you get an inflammatory reaction in the joint. It gets a little swollen, it gets a little warm, and it is unfortunately painful. Because it's painful, you don't want to move it. And the less you move it, the more stiff it becomes, that's where the stiffness comes. So surprisingly, what your physiotherapist will tell you is that you have to move the joint, all right? But we move the joint in a way that we're not further destroying the joint. And again, this might sound like a stuck record, but hydrotherapy is a wonderful exercise. We are blessed with around us a number of beaches we can go to. Move in a safe way. I'm not saying that Everybody can get into the beach. There are some people who are dreadfully afraid of the water. We don't send them to the beach. Movement is important, and the so old is that actually like a prescription of sorts? We can give you a prescription yes. of of hydrotherapy, and there's some therapists who specialize in hydrotherapy exercises in the pool, which is a controlled environment. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't have that at the QH anymore. We had a pool. Uh, uh, and what about started. using the beach in terms of your guidance? And using our okay. natural resources. So yeah. So I in 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 the private setting, I have treated patients at the beach, including stroke patients. So you go to the beach and help them? With them. Yes. Take them into the water, yeah. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. at the QA setting, we don't have that, that the privilege of doing that. Mm -hmm. um, we once actually had one with the Council for the Disabled, where we did um, the disability unit, right. where we did a, um, a beach day for them. we, we, we got to find a way to do a beach day for real. I, 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 like, I like that <laughs> thought. We have another caller here on the Pulse Radio Show. Good morning, caller. What's your question or comment? Good morning, um, Shane and panel. I have a question. I have, I am hypertensive, right? But I not able to get, uh, I, I even caught uh, tingling from the fingers to the elbow at night in the middle of the day when it's sleeping. I need just going to get up and like pump my finger. What is that there? You could be having what we would call a condition called carpal tunnel syndrome. What um, happens uh -huh. is um, with you being hypertensive, 
the pressure around the nerve that goes into the hand that's getting some pressure on it so that's where you would get that numbness that's where you would get that tingling if you don't mind me asking what kind of profession you're into I don't work I'm oh okay. okay okay because usually you will see for persons who use their arms use their hands a lot um, but because of your hypertension the pressure on the nerve is what's causing that numbness that tingling around the arm and therefore as you're resting that pressure actually is going to be increasing around the nerve causing oh. that numbness and tingling into the hands so yeah 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 what what to do <laughs> <laughs> take anything for all this a procedure you can do for it are you every, almost every night it is with, with this thing it would happen it's what we would what you can do and this is where occupational therapy can come in we they would give you something what we would call resting splints and they can actually support your arm while you're sleeping to help to minimize the effects that you will be having from the carpal tunnel syndrome and, and for the caller, what would you suggest mm -hmm. in terms of uh, should she go and see her GP? Yes, should, what, what, yes for what, sure. Um, she can follow up with her GP. Um, as Dr. Warner would have mentioned, differential diagnosis, we need to pinpoint exactly what it is that is causing the numbness in the hands. And once that has been clarified, she can then be led into the right channels as to what she can use to help with the condition. And um, I have another query. Sure. I just got a lot of cramp in my feet. In in the um on on the in the in the bottom of body body calves and in the left feet and on the down by the ankles. Mm -hmm. I just got a lot of cramp. Cramp at night. It won't see happen at night. When I sleeping, you cramp. Mm hmm So I was wondering what that could be what, or what could be, be causing it yes please dr warner okay so um are you also diabetic no please okay mm -hmm. and are you overweight no please and your bed surface when last did you change it your bed <laughs> i think i need to do that <laughs> no, so it's okay so you see when you come in for your assessment we go through all of these all things yeah. if your bed mm -hmm. is um, you've had it for a while and it's not firm anymore yeah when I mean you were laying you can be putting a lot of stress on your lower back, which oh. in turn can then cause the same type of nerve sensation that I described in the sciatic person that called earlier in your legs. But there are again other things that can cause this. Circulating problems can cause this. And the other thing when we mentioned about your upper limb, about your hand, or the pins and needles, your neck position may also affect this. But you sound more classically carpal tunnel syndrome. That four day morning, getting <coughs> having to shake your hand up is almost um, you know, the Bible explanation <laughs> of carpal tunnel syndrome. That's why we said that. But your doctor, because we work on referral, your doctor would have to see you first. Nonetheless, a number of questions would have to go in. So we have to look first at your bed surface. Then we can advise you on sleeping positions to help minimize some of your discomfort. Failing that, there is medication that can be gotten from your physician to stop that type of nerve type pain. It's a very uncomfortable pain, we know. Very, very uncomfortable. Unfortunately, my we don't. My is on in September with my doctor, so I can ask. Yes, please questions. do. Yes. Yeah, please do. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank well, you very much. Yes, and we really hope that we've helped you and your doctor, if necessary, will refer you uh, to Dr. Warner or Dr. Grace uh, so they can help you to get back to normal and you wouldn't have to feel those uncomfortable sensations, those pins and needles, and sometimes. Uh, the circumstances you go through we have like uh 60 more seconds so i just want to uh, give you some wrap-up comments uh dr grace starting with you any advice to our audience you know in terms of what they need to do to keep moving and to really address some of these concerns that we would have heard popping up here on the pulse radio show um I would just want to tell everyone listening, um, it's easy to yield and give in to the pain and not want to move, but that actually makes the problem worse. Just with guided exercise by your physiotherapist, we can get you to a point where you can be rehabilitated and function in a way that you can re-engage back in society um if you're someone you know this is august we're heading straight into the christmas season because time is going really fast you Hello, know we got any pet before we get the christmas <laughs> I <know>. I, I <laughs> <laughs> but i mean if you're somebody who would pick down a house in a whole day 
uh-huh. we tell you okay let's do it room by room so that you still can achieve what you need to do but in a way that does not put a whole lot of unnecessary stress on the body okay you're right. one of those christmas people like can see dr ward <laughs> final comments from you very very quickly yes we are actually approaching our physiotherapy day next month and we're dealing with back pain. What day next month? Yeah, the 8th of, of, the September. 8th of September. Dr. Warren, I'm not going to be uh, in the audience. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> the physiotherapy association will do their part to all do right. the message. Um, so we just want to put that plug out there. Um, we're going to be definitely engaging the public on managing back pain, some of which comes from arthritis, some of which comes from your job. Keep moving, as Dr. Grace has said, but do so safely, correct footwear, and we add God's blessings to you. Cool. Two seconds from you. Just everyone remember to be safe uh, at home, especially the bathroom and the kitchen are two areas where you want to make sure the surface is clean and dry because those two areas in the home are where um, folks tend to fall because of the slippery surfaces from the water Mm -hmm. and or grease. Thank you very much to you all, Dr. Christine Greenidge. You heard from Dr. Jerry Warner, our chief physiotherapist. Dr. Alicia Grace, also a physiotherapist in the physiotherapy department, and I'm Shane Seeley saying it's good being here with you. Of course, you can check us out on our website. That's www.qehconnect.com. We have the full slew of a podcast there where you can hear all of the episodes here uh, that would have been aired live on CBCQ 100.7 FM. So until next time, I'm Shane Seeley. You be safe. That's right. The QEH Pulse Radio Show was brought to you with the kind compliments of MedSafe Medical Supplies Limited. For all your medical supply needs, visit MedSafe Medical Supplies Limited. We offer a wide range of products including wheelchairs, walkers, canes, crutches, blood pressure machines, stethoscopes, and so much more. Conveniently located on Gemmets Lane, just a two-minute walk from the Queen Elizabeth Hospital. And for your convenience, we deliver free to the QEH. Open Monday to Saturday, 8.30 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. Call us at 624-7542. MedSafe Medical Supplies Limited, your trusted source for medical essentials.